Byron is better than you think. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kara Simon. It is time for the Byron Olympics. Now, I know what you're thinking. Maybe Byron's not very good. I'm gonna tell you guys that he is better than you think. I don't think that he's gonna be OP, but there are a lot of reasons why I am super excited for him. In today's video, we're gonna be covering everything that you need to know about Byron. We're gonna break down his mechanics, then we're gonna compare him against every other brawler in the game in the Brawl Stars Olympics events. Then I'm gonna talk about how strong I think Byron is going to be. Brawler overview. Byron is a mythic brawler who completes Piper and Barley's trio. I believe their trio is the Old West Salesman trio. And if Barley serves drinks and Piper makes baked goods, Byron is the con artist who sells fake potions and snake oil remedies for a living. I will find you. Take this at your peril. Try some snake oil extract. Sign here with your life. Byron's attack, careful dose. For Byron's attack, he shoots a long range dart that can either poison enemies or heal friendly brawlers. The healing and the damage happens over the course of three seconds. And because his attack takes time to work, he's very deceptive with the amount of damage that he can do. Now, unlike Crow, whose poison just gets extended if he hits an enemy with more than one attack, Byron's poison stacks, which means that Byron can quickly unload three shots on an enemy, then run away to safety while he awaits their demise. Byron's super, Full treatment. For a super, he throws out a vial that heals friendly brawlers and damages enemy opponents. He can also use this on himself when he needs to. Now, his super doesn't deal as much damage as other supers, and it doesn't heal as much as others, but the fact that it can be used to do both at once gives it a very unique value that no other super can do without a star power gadget like Poco. Byron's gadget shot in the arm. When Byron uses his gadget, he gives himself a shot that heals him for 800 health per second for three seconds for a total of 2,400 health. This is actually just as much healing as BB's vitamin booster gadget, but he heals a total amount of health one second faster. Now, just like BB's gadget, Byron's shot in the arm gadget does take a second to activate, so it'll take a little bit of practice to get used to. Byron's star power, malaise. With this star power equipped, enemy opponents who are hit by Byron's super will receive 50% less healing from any source for the next nine seconds. This includes the self healing that occurs after you haven't attacked or taken damage for a few seconds. And we don't have any other abilities that can deny healing in the game. So I'm not entirely sure how this is going to impact things, but I'm really excited to find out. Now that we know how Byron's mechanics work, let's put him through a bunch of tests that are designed to see exactly how he's going to do against all other brawlers in a lot of different types of situations. We're going to start with Byron's worst test and move our way up to his best test. Now I'm going to tell you right now that Byron isn't the best in some of the tests, but in other tests, he is straight up amazing. So make sure you watch to the end so you understand why I think he's better than you think he is. By the way, if you're liking what you're seeing right now, make sure you subscribe for a similar sneak peek of Edgar, who's going to be the next brawler. And I'll do that as soon as Supercell lets me do that. The supercharge test. Byron's super requires nine ticks of damage to completely charge up. Now he can do that with only three ammo, but it does take a long time for his attacks to deal damage. So it takes him 3.2 seconds for him to complete this test. Byron places 40th out of the 42 brawlers for the supercharged test. The assassin test. Now the assassin test measures how much burst damage a brawler can do in only three seconds. Because Byron's attacks take three whole seconds to deal their full damage, he doesn't even get to fully utilize his attacks for this test. He deals 6,020 damage in three seconds, which places him in 35th, right between Jackie and Lou, just for a good reference right there. Byron is not very good at assassinating his targets very quickly. The box test. Now the box test is a good indicator of how good a brawler will be at ramping up in showdown. Byron requires four ammo to take out his first and second boxes, and he requires two power cubes before he can start taking out boxes with three ammo. It takes Byron one minute and 15 seconds to take out all 16 boxes, which is a really good indicator that Byron is not going to be very good in the box test. Now, even though I have not measured all brawlers in this test, I'm gonna estimate that Byron would place around 35th place. The area test. This test gives us a good idea of how much control a brawler offers. With his attack, Byron's able to clear 20 skulls, but he's able to clear 22 skulls with his super. This ties him with Mortis, Mr. P, and Colt for 34th place, which is a good indicator that Byron will not be very good at controlling the field. The attack test. Edgar's attacks deal 560 damage three times, which comes to a total of 1,680 damage. This ties him with Lou and Frank for 31st for the attack.
attack test. Now, unlike Lou, who has to hit three projectiles, Byron only has to hit one in order for him to deal his damage. And unlike Frank, who has a short range, Byron has a very long range. And with only two ammo, he's able to take out the seven lowest HP brawlers in the game, like Crow, B, and Barley. And with three ammo, Byron can deal 5,040 damage, which is enough to take out 27 of the 42 brawlers in the game, including M's bow and Gale. The boss test. This test is a good indicator of how much damage a brawler can do over a long period of time. It's a combination of attack damage, super damage, reload speed, and super recharge, and also includes any bonus damage from gadgets or star powers. Byron's abilities are split to both heal and deal damage, so it comes to no surprise that he doesn't do too well at just damage, especially in this test as just a support brawler. He's able to finish this test in just under 1 minute and 20 seconds, which plays him in 31st for the boss test. He performs very similarly to Frank, Surge, and M's when it comes to how much damage he deals over a long period of time. The Race Test Byron doesn't have any abilities that increase his speed, and he has a normal movement speed, which ties him with 16 other brawlers for 27th place. The Dive Test The best thing for Byron to do in the Dive Test is to activate his gadget as soon as he can and throw out his super and a couple of attacks at the Ike Turret. He's able to deal 5,640 damage to the Ike Turret, which ties him with Jackie for 26th place. In other words, Byron's not very great at handling high pressure situations. The Super Range Test Byron's Super has a throw range of 7 tiles and a radius of 2 and 2 thirds tiles for a total Super Range of 9 and 2 thirds tiles. This is actually the exact same range and radius as Dynamite Super, so if a Dynamite Super can hit it, so can a Byron Super. This ties Byron and Dynamite for 22nd in the Super Range Test. The Super Test Byron's Super instantly deals 2,100 damage on impact, which places him for 17th in the super test. This is between Frank and M's who deal 1,680 damage with their supers and Spike, Amber, and Tick who deal 2,800 damage with their supers. Now from this point on, Byron is better than half of the brawlers in the game for the following tests. The Swarm Test. This test helps us understand how good a brawler is at dealing with multiple targets. Byron uses three supers and three attacks to clear the swarm in 4.5 seconds. This is really fast. It places him in 15th place, which is slightly faster than Spike and slightly slower than Frank. I don't think that Byron is actually going to be super good at dealing with multiple enemies, but I do think that his super will be very useful in close-up fights where teammates and enemies are bunched up together. The Attack Range Test Byron has a very long attack range of 10 tiles. This ties him with B and Piper for the 12th longest attack range in the game. Now, to be honest though, most brawlers with longer attack ranges actually do so because of some weird mechanic like Jesse's bounce shot or Shelly's gadget or Rico's increased range from his bouncing attack. Byron is definitely a long-range sniper who can really put a lot of hurt on enemies or support his teammates from a safe distance away. The Reload Test It takes Byron 16.7 seconds to completely unload and reload 10 ammo, which gives him a total reload speed of 1.67 seconds and places him in 11th for the Reload Test. This is slightly faster than Crow's and Rosa's reload speeds and slightly slower than Gale's and BB's reload speeds. Now, I should mention that although Byron does reload incredibly quickly, there's quite a bit of delay between his attacks, and it's kind of similar to the amount of time between Piper's and Brock's attacks. Now, with that said, though, both Piper and Brock have very slow reload speeds, which makes me think that Byron might actually be a pretty decent sniper. The Survival Test It might surprise you that Byron has the fifth longest survival time in the game, despite having the eighth lowest HP. This is thanks to the massive amounts of healing that he gets from his three gadget uses on top of the burst heal from his super. This suggests that even though Byron is squishy, if you play him right, it's going to be very difficult for your enemies to take you out. The Burst Heal Test In this test, brawlers can use one ability to heal a friendly brawler for as much health as possible in one burst. Byron can heal 2,100 HP to his teammate with his super, which places him in second place for this test. The only other brawler that can beat this is Poco's super at 2,940 healing. But the interesting thing is about Poco and Byron is that they can both heal and deal damage with one super if Poco is using his Screeching Solo Star Power. So who's able to provide more value? Well, one way we can look at it is by adding the healing HP and the damage HP together. Poco's total value comes to 3,740 HP, but Byron's total value comes to 4,200 HP. I'm honestly not sure which is going to be better overall, but this does kind of give you a good idea of how 
how much Byron's can be able to provide a lot of support. The Healing Denial Test. Byron Star Power is the only ability that reduces enemy healing, so he gets first place in this test. Congratulations, Byron. You won a fake Olympics event. Up next, guys, we have Byron's best Olympics event, and then we're going to talk about how strong I think he's going to be. And Byron's best test is the Heal Test. Now, this test is designed to see how long it takes a healer to heal 10,000 total health using any and all abilities that they can on a teammate. First up is Pam, who gets the help from her super turret, her pulse modulator gadget, and her mama's hug star power. She heals 10,000 health in 10.8 seconds and takes third place. Coming in second place is Poco, who gets to use his super, his tuning fork gadget, and his decapo star power. He's able to heal 10,000 health in an impressive 8.5 seconds, but it is not enough to compete against Byron, who places first in the heal test. Byron uses his attack and his super to heal 10,000 healing in only 7.9 seconds which makes Byron the fastest single target healer in the game. Now it's time for us to talk about how strong Byron is going to be. Do I think that people are going to be obsessed with Byron? No. No, I don't. Players rarely obsess over support brawlers. Do I think that Byron is going to be OP? No. I don't think he deals enough damage to be great in all of the game modes. Do I think that Byron is going to be stronger than people think? Yes. I think that people are going to underestimate Byron because they're only going to look at his damage without also considering the fact that he can swap between healing and damage whenever he wants to. It takes a long time for both his healing and his damage to actually take effect, which is somewhat of a weakness, but it's also kind of a strength to him. Byron is a con man. He wants you to think that you're safe until he's already done his damage and he's out of town, right? And that's exactly why I think he's going to be better than people think. He's a high skill cap brawler whose shots are difficult to hit, but who whose shots also reload really, really fast, and a skilled player is going to be able to lure enemies into a false sense of security because they won't realize that the shot that just hit them is going to be exactly what kills them. And on top of that, Byron's going to be able to provide support when there's not an opportunity for him to deal damage because he can just attack a teammate. I think for most of the game modes, Byron's going to be a B or A tier. I think he's going to be really bad in solo showdown, but where he can support a teammate, I think that he has a really, a, like a lot of potential. But in bounty, I think he is going to be an S tier brawler, guys. Probably one of the best. The fact that he's going to be able to compete at range with the best bounty brawlers, and he's only going to require two hits in order to take out B, Piper, and Brock, and Tick, right? Two ammo. That's all he has to do. Attack him once, they think they're going to be safe. You attack him again, they think that they're safe, but really, th three seconds later, they're going to be dead, right? That is really cool in Bounty, and he also has a lot of survivability with his own self-healing, and also he's going to help his teammates survive. And in Bounty, surviving is more important than getting kills, so, like, he really seems like the ultimate Bounty Brawler, and I really do think he's going to be S tier, possibly even the best Bounty Brawler. We'll see once we do a tier list video on him. I'm personally really excited for Byron. I can't wait to see how he feels in matches. I think that Supercell did an amazing job with his character and his personality. He really does feel like he fits into the game. But for now, I want to know what you guys think about Byron and how strong you think he's going to be. Maybe I'm going to be completely wrong, and that's totally fine. I'll make sure and do an update video once I actually have some time to push him against competitive players. Make sure you guys subscribe for a future Olympics video like this for for Edgar and use code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. For now, guys, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.